Dr. Bill Deagle. Bill is with us well every week, every Tuesday. Hello, Bill. How are you? I understand you've got a lot of stuff on the plate tonight. Oh yeah, lots much, of stuff. Much, much is happening. It's getting crazier all the time. Yeah, it's almost like the uh, the uh, we're following the white rabbit you know, down the rabbit hole. And yeah. uh, as it as it was said in the uh, Lewis Carroll story, it is getting curiouser and curiouser. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the twisted uh, logic of the words. Um, I guess we might as well start off with the biggest, baddest thing that's going on that people are still ignoring. The I call the lame brain media and the paralyzed and uh, impotent public. There, there. You know, I agree, but I disagree. I don't think the media is lame brain. I think. Well, let's let me go with you on that. They're lame brain by design. By oh yeah, dictum. of course. They're fact, following they, orders. They're, they're supposed to be the purveyors of lies and disinformation, and so, they're actually mind control agents unwitting, no, but that's exactly. what they are. So in other words, what you're saying is actually they they act like the Keystone Cops and the Groucho Brothers, but they're actually evil, uh, evil uh, designs are covered with comic and relief and stupidity. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, uh, yeah exactly. I totally agree. Uh, yeah, which is really a twist. Uh, in other words, they... They don't even show respect. One of the funniest things I've seen, which is so bizarre and makes me angry, is the latest they camp- campaign. I don't want to hear about this one. They try to compare, when they're trying to teach people about radiation, they compared one of the agencies that was hired, tried to compare radiation to an angry Japanese wife. Oh, I, saw, I, I, yeah, I saw it. I, yeah. oh, I couldn't believe I said But So they dropped this controversial campaign aimed to educate women about nuclear safety that compared radiation to the screaming voice of an angry wife. It's disgusting. It's totally like, disgusting. This is really, as, what it is, is it's actually trying to degrade humanity, trying to dumb us down, trying to make us seem like we're conspiracy theorists, where if we don't put a smiley face on, the radiation will get you. And it's only uh, patriotic in Japan if you spread the radiation around. So, we, as I said before, you use Fukushima way to wipe away the smile off your face that your little place of Japan isn't quite as radioactive as the other parts. Well, we remember in the beginning that what happened was there were actually some of the little urban and and small metropolitan areas, which were northwest, which didn't get hit so hard, northwest and west, and they were starting to say there's not much radiation here. Radioactive readings are, are minimal, there's no problem, we're non-existent, and the government didn't like that. So then it became the obligation, the honor of every city in Japan to take its share of radioactive waste and burn it in its municipal incinerators. Well, it's not How just the crime of the Japanese. We, we need to file suits in the International Court of Justice against Japan and the NOTA government. They need to know that we in America are sitting literally in the firing line. of the, it's, like, it's like a bunch of kids next door trying to play with high explosives. The problem is they're playing around with high explosives big enough so they'll, they'll throw rocks through our front window or may hit us in our bed. And so it's not like, yeah. okay, you can do your stuff over there as long as you don't bother us. No, it's going to bother us. It already fact, has. It's right yeah. here. Yeah, you exactly. Don't eat, you don't eat tuna. You don't eat sushi. You don't eat nori uh, unless you want trouble. And look yeah. at all the people. Come on. Last March, the radioactive particles, the hot particles, covered most of this country to one degree or another. It wasn't uniform. But even, even the people who study this say that now Arnie Gunderson was the, the mouthpiece for it. The average Seattle resident was inhaling six hot particles a day at the height of the contamination, any one of which is, is potentially fatal. And now, no well, one's talking about this. No, but by the way, here's, here's the positive side of this, and there's things that people can take, like our radiation protection uh, kit. And I tell people they need to have a radiation detector. If they go on our website and go to LSTMF, they can get a good radiation detector. The latest and best one is called, is called the Inspector EXP. It has a little radiation arm, which is even more threatening if you walk into the fish market or your vegetable store or wherever, and you just decide to kind of scan things. You can take Whipple, this arm, and you can put it on audio, and it goes, and it starts making all kinds of noises. Oh, you you plug it into the uh, the inspector? At the top of the inspector. And oh, it's really, a, so it's an add-on. It's an accessory. It's, it's, yeah, it's a new advanced uh, version. It's just an add-on. You can get the add-on separately if you want to, and you even get software, by the way, to download it. And what we need to do is start recording more data because the government's not going to do anything. The the big, uh, as I say, we had another election today, of course, which indicates that Obama... Another, another what? Another selection, I call it. Aha, uh-huh, yes. Not not an election, it's a selection. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway, um, 
I was going through some of the news articles you have, and I checked out to myself, and I couldn't believe this picture. I saw this young lady, uh, resident uh, Numayu, I guess, that uh, put a blog up, and they actually took it down because she, she saw her, you know, her mouth, her teeth are falling off. Well, it's back up of, again. Yeah, I know it's back up. This is an example. Even uh, mayors of, you know, a female mayor of one of the towns over there kind of comes out, and it's like, you know, the men have more cojones than these so-called Japanese. I mean, the women have more cojones than the men. What's going on where the women are protesting it because they have enough more more humanity and are more more concerned about the future than these so-called macho Japanese men. What's the problem? Well, how can people mouth? I saw the, the, the mealy mouth kind of twisted, kind of, I'm telling you a lie, but I want to look like I'm really being honest. Look, I think we've got reactor cooling pool level and everything is fine. I'm thinking, oh my God, this is like the Titanic and there's about like two inches of air above his head, and he's stuck in a bulkhead, mm-hmm. and he's still trying to breathe with a straw, and he's telling us everything's going to be fine. Let it's me, not going to uh, be fine. No, it's not going to be fine. And I'm sorry for people who are in denial about this. They think the problem is contained in Japan. I, I, we, we've spent no. the last year trying to tell people about ocean currents, about weather systems, and about readings, those that we can get. And they're right. all absolutely conclusive that we well, have been pasted, and we'll, it's in the pine needles all up and down the West Coast, it's in the forests, yeah. it's in the soil, you see Berkeley measured, it's in the milk, it's in the vegetables. No, but we're not being affected. No, oh, no, don't worry, not it's, not, it's not enough to really do any harm. Well, uh, the words bioaccumulation mean anything to anybody? Let me right. ask all of you to please look in headlines at rents.com. The uh, sixth story down, Bill just referred to. Fukushima resident, new site shows radiation poisoning. I want you to look at this uh, young woman, attractive woman in Japan. Look what's happened to her teeth. Please look at the pictures. This is mm-hmm. no joke. Look at her skin. Look what's, This is what radiation, radiation does burns. to, to yeah. human beings. Now, let me go through some technical things for those out there that don't understand what the timeline of what's going to happen. And I may, I'm going to cover things that probably no one else, including some of your experts on the show, have covered. And there's a number of, of possible, very nasty possibilities that are going to happen. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and which sequence. The first thing, we're getting a constant release of radiation, and then we're getting what I call burps, which is why Alexander Higgins' site reported a month ago, almost three weeks ago, that there was a radiation release, and everybody was emailing and panicking, oh my gosh, there's a big radiation cloud heading over here. No, no, the cloud was released six weeks earlier, they didn't report it through the you know, the channels of the media until finally he got the data and posted it up from a Japanese site, I think it was ENE News. And in fact, it was probably around the early to middle of April. So there's going to be repeated burps. Now, and then I'm going to get into a different realm of information here. I'm going to call this the timeline. And the timeline is based on three groups of information. The first group of information, which is the most important, is it's based on, how can I say it? Intuitive knowledge that transcends the scientific. And that's probably the most important. It's almost like an animal knowing its time because you can sense the P wave of a giant earthquake and tsunami coming. So you're not you're in the top of the coconut tree or you're heading up to the top side of the mountain while everybody else is going out to the shore to see the fish flopping around before the tsunami hits. The dogs, the elephants, any wild animals, any animal that had two clues was God and was not on the beach. Okay? So that's the first group. The second bit of information is technical. I have contacts within the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and other scientists I've been in communication with literally daily. And the third group of information is my own background. I have a background in nuclear physics, radiation toxicology, and I know what this stuff does. To me. And it's more scary than anybody out there can even imagine. And we're not exaggerating. So here's the timeline. The first thing that's likely to happen is we have multiple problems in different reactors. Reactor 2, the temperatures are going up. They're saying the gauges aren't working, but they no, but are. The funny thing about the gauges is when they fluctuate, they all fluctuate together. In the same direction, yeah, exactly. We also don't know where the heliquarium is, and they don't want to tell us, even if they did know. They're not bringing equipment even half a mile away to look to see if the aquarium's like 60 feet, a half a mile down. Who knows where the hell it is? We also don't have them chesting even a mile away, because they actually could go in a big circle around the area and see if there's what I call, as I predict, steam tubes coming out of the Fukushima Daiichi plant area that are heading out to the ocean. There's no ground-penetrating radar at the bottom of the ocean floor where they could drag it along the ocean floor. There's nothing a mile away looking to see, gee, are the steam tubes going 10, 20, 30 kilometers away from the 
Or in some of those steam tubes, are they actually connecting with the rail system and the subway system in northern Tokyo? Nah, that's not important. Who cares if when they breathe air down in Tokyo and millions of tra- uh, commuters suck in air and these trains are acting like giant plungers pushing air back and forth and people with the radiation detectors on YouTube have already shown it like, oh my gosh, look at this. And the Japanese people are some of the smartest people on earth. They're looking, oh my God, look, look, look. And the numbers go, dut, 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 and think, these people know something really bad's happening. The problem is, it's the part of their culture to stay silent. But I think underneath it, they're boiling angry. So here's what I think is going to happen. We have 1,535 fuel assembly rods in cooling pool four. These are the technical things that are going to fail. The seal is the most vulnerable. That seal just gets old from neutron annealing. The metals are breaking down, turning into what I call a flaky pry crust. And the building, it, the actual steel, is, the wall is blown off and it's bulging. So all you need to do, you don't even need a zirconium fire, which could also happen. You just need to have those fuel assemblies get hot enough. They're going to have a massive, mind-boggling release of radiation. that will make Chernobyl seem like a garden party of three-year-olds. And that radiation cloud is going to come toward not only northern Japan, to us, all over North America, and it'll catch these high-altitude jet streams and go to the southern hemisphere as well. It's going to outdo Chernobyl by thousands of times. And that's the only one of the first most nasty bursts that's going to happen since March 11th. This one is going to cause panic on a global scale. And I believe by midsummer, mid-July, this event will probably happen. It will push the final straw on the European economy back to crash the world economy. That's what I think is going to happen.